In this short video, we will introduce the coffee functional economic regions and explain some of their derivation. And a bit later, we will provide a practical demonstration of how to use these new geography within the Oran portal and combine data sets and spatial and analytical tools that we've developed within Oran to further your research horizons. But first I thought it would be useful to provide you with a brief introduction to the motivation for developing the coffee functional economic regions. Some years ago I was interested in understanding how macroeconomic impacts were distributed across regional space. The results that we obtained using fairly sophisticated spatial econometric methods were somewhat different to the perceived wisdom at the time. But the problem was that I wasn't sure whether those results were artefacts of the administrative boundaries that the Australian Bureau of Statistics provides, that is the geography, or whether they were demonstrating new knowledge. The problem with the administrative geography that is provided by the ABS as the standard geographical boundaries, and these boundaries are the way in which they disseminate their data, is that they're historical artefacts of local government regions, state boundaries, postal areas, and a, an array of other statistical considerations that may have no economic bearing at all. And the problem then is that if there's economic behaviour that crosses these administrative boundaries regularly that create economic impacts that tie two or more regions together in a dependent way, the use of standard econometric analysis will probably deliver flawed results because of the concept and the presence of spatial autocorrelation. These dependencies across regions show up in the data and these conventional regional analysis methods assume that the geographic regions are independent whereas the economic behaviour will determine that they're dependent. And so what we wanted to come up with was a new geography where we expunged those dependencies and the basis for our new geography was a fairly detailed analysis of commuting flows. So this concept of a local labour market which exhausts the demand for and supply of labour within a regional context can be determined by an examination of commuting flows, where people live and where they go to work. And we used various clustering and other statistical methodologies to reconfigure the geography so that the boundaries were more in keeping with economic behaviour and had less to do with administrative type considerations. And that was the basis of our coffee functional economic regions. When we've done further analysis on the basis of the new geography, the spatial autocorrelation that appears in certain cases using the ABS geography disappears and we can be more confident that the results we're obtaining are in fact valid and constitute knowledge rather than are just artefacts of the way in which the geography is arbitrarily constructed. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Michael Flanagan, who's a researcher at the Centre of Full Employment and Equity, and he will take you through the use of these regions within the Oran portal. Thanks for your time and good research. Hello and welcome to a demonstration of the coffee functional economic regions on the Oran portal. We start here at the Oran homepage and to access the portal we click the, the login to take us to the, the portal. Normally a login page would come in, it's remembered my, me from previously so I've skipped past that onto the into my own page so I log in as myself. Now to start we will show demonstrate a, a visual map of the functional economic regions. To do this, so we select the area selection of Australia and refine the area 
functional economic regions. There are a list of different types of functional economic regions. These are all explained on our manual on the ORIN website, but we will select the functional economic regions. And as you can see, it displays a map of the functional economic regions. If we mouse over any region, it shows the name of the region there. Okay, so that's what the functional economic region map looks like. To access data for the functional economic regions, we would select data set in the data panel. You can either put in keywords or search by organisation. I'll search by organisation on this occasion. UN Coffee. <coughs> search, and there is a list of, of data sets available through our, through our centre including coffee functional economic regions, which would be a, you'd select which variables you would like to see there. And there's a, a range there, obviously. Just to save some time, I've already uploaded a, a data set with some, some variables for each of the functional economic regions, or CFERs, coffee functional economic regions, I'll use that from now on. And then we have um, just some labour data, labour force participation rate, employment as a proportion of working age population, employment growth, and growth, that's the one we'll mostly be using. <coughs> so to start with, we will show a choropleth map of employment growth across the functional economic regions. To do that, firstly, we need to spatialise our data set. So we have our data set with only with the regions listed. We need to, to add geometries to that. And to do that, we need to go to spatial data manipulation and spatialise aggregated data set. So this is the data set we're using and we want to add geometries to it. <coughs> and there we go, so we have a look at that. So it's all those variables I showed before, plus our, our geometry now. So we might rename that. So it, it appears then in the, in the data panel. So I'm going to rename it data and spatial just so we know it's got spatial geometries attached to it and to, do, to see a choropleth map now we go to maps charts and graphs under the visualize panel map visualizations choropleth our data set is the new one with the spatial after it and our attribute as if we we're going to look at employment growth have a look at that <clears throat> and there we are and again if we map over our areas um, sorry, mouse over our areas we not only have the name but also the employment growth variable and the class corresponding to our, our breakdown as sort of explained also we used our, just a, a Jenks classification there are other classifications available there okay now we're going to use our CFER data to run some spatial statistics. And the first one we'll use is, is Moran's eye, which identifies global spatial autocorrelation of a variable. So we've gone to spatial statistics group and Moran's eye item. Now our parameters, our data set input, we'll go back to our original data set, which is this CFER labor force data. Our spatial weight matrix. Now there are tools here that can compute a spatial weight matrix. It takes a little while to do that. I, I've done it previously, um, so I will use a one I prepared earlier. This is a contiguous, a first order contiguous spatial weight matrix. So regions are neighbors if they are in contact with each other. A key column area code, and the variable again we're going to look at is employment growth. We'll keep these two the same. Our alternative hypothesis is two-sided, and our inference. If we mouse over there, we can see what that means. Um, we want normality, so we'll keep that as false or unticked. So we run our Moran's eye. We get both a text output and a data set output. The text output displays in our visualize panel, and our data set output visual appears in our, in our data panel. So if we display that, there's our text output. 
you know, Moran's I, our, our p value there is the thing to look at when investigating spatial autocorrelation. It is, it's greater than 0 0.05, which is the normal significance level. So we may say that employment growth does not display spatial autocorrelation across the sea of the hours. Okay, in our data set output, not only does the original variable appear, but also the lagged variable. The lagged variable is the average of the neighboring regions for each neighboring regions for each region and then we scale both those and those actually give our, our Moran scatter plot and we can show a Moran scatter plot by going to charts and Moran's eye scatter plot and putting in the same input parameters we used for the Moran's eye which is our original data set the same spatial weight matrix our key column and our variable employment growth Keep these, we'll name this on the growth and the employment growth is from 2001 to 2006. And we run that. And we display that, and there's our Moran's nice cut of plot. The, the line there, the line of best fit, is the actual slope of the Moran's eye. As you can see, the same value we, we saw previously. Okay, next we will use our tools to do what's called the local Moran's eye, which identifies local areas of spatial association. So, local, so again, in spatial statistics, local Moran's eye. Our data set input is the same, same special weight matrix, key column, area code, variable, and employment growth again. We'll leave those the same. We run that. And this just gives a, a data set output, which as I said will appear for you here. And we can obviously rename all these as well. As we did with our first, our first output. And this gives a, a range of, of output variables: uh, the the eyes, the standard deviation, the p-values, and as well as the lag scale and scale lagged variables. These two are the ones we want to be able to display a corpus map showing the the local eye or the local pockets of spatial association across Australia. Now, again, I've prepared one earlier. So this is actually that same one just aggregated or appended to the original data, data set. Um, it's also got our geographies already attached. So we'll just go straight to displaying that as a choropleth map. So we've taken that original choropleth off and we're going to add a new one. Now this one our data set is CFER data with localized spatial, so that's what I've named that, that new data set. The attribute we want is employment map group. Pre classified. Label attribute is our name. We want five. Diverging and grey, red, blue. And there we have this is called a local Moran map for the employment growth variable across the CFERs. The light blues, they're, they're the null ones. And we can see. There we go. So sorry. So Peter and Simpson there is there's an employment growth map group of four, which would mean it has high high spatial association. Where three is is low high. Okay, so that's the output for a local eye local eye map. And just lastly, we'll just show the capabilities 
of the tools in regards to spatial regression. There are a number of spatial regression models available on the on the portal through this spatial statistics group. We would first run a probably a diagnostics, either a Lagrange multipliers or a Moran's eye on residuals, and see whether there is um, sufficient evidence that there is spatial autocorrelation, in which case we would then use one of the appropriate models. All this is, is explained in our, in our manuals on the on the Orem website. So anyway, that's a short introduction to the CFERs and a few of the spatial statistics available on the Orem portal. I hope that's been of some assistance. Mm -hmm.